Hi, this is Kimberly Roberto, and I wanted to share with you um, our workshop that we did on how to conquer the blood sugar battle. And this um, workshop that we did live was so wildly successful and popular, and people just loved it. And to be honest, over the years, we've been in practice 20 years, and we've seen so much success with um, people that were pre-diabetic and diabetic, people who have been diabetic for decades, who have been able to reverse their diagnosis um, using some of the things that I'm going to be talking about today. So a couple of ground rules here. One is I don't want you to believe everything that I tell you in this um, workshop. I want you to go do some research on your own. One of the most important things that my husband and I do is to really empower people to make their own healthcare decisions based on informed de decisions. So we want people to do their research. It's your health. It's your responsibility. No one else's. Um, and don't let this just be information and, hey, that was kind of a cool workshop and I learned a couple things. I want you to take this and turn it into action. And sometimes that's hard to do. So the third thing I want you to think about is letting us help you. So we have tons of resources. I'll give you um, information on how to follow up with this workshop and be successful and really make some changes in your life. So based on those three things, um, let's get started. So here's the deal. How do you know if you have a blood sugar issue? Of course, if you have a diagnosis already, you know. But listen, if you have cravings, especially for things like sugar, and that includes bread and pasta and rice and all of the pizza, all of those things, if you have those cravings, chances are you have a blood sugar issue. If you feel the need to eat frequently, um, if you feel like you're um, shaky or dizzy or you get really moody if you don't eat um, if you have anxiety, if you never really feel satisfied when you eat, if you're tired all the time, if you experience headaches, especially when you're hungry, um, those are all indications that you have blood sugar issues, and so many people have them. And listen, I was one of those people. So I was a carboholic, um, typical, you know, standard American diet. I would eat just about everything, but I had cravings for things like bread and sugar. I would have to have a big glass of orange juice first thing in the morning when I woke up. I would have these crashes. I would have cravings. I would get shaky if I hadn't eaten in a while. And I remember vividly when um, my husband and I were getting married, my dad's one item or token of advice was make sure you keep her fed because my moods were just out of control. So I knew I had blood sugar issues. And I'm telling you, once I made these changes with my um, lifestyle, especially my nutrition, those things all went away and I haven't experienced any of that in years. So let's get into some of the background. And so like I just talked about sugar, it is a sugar-fueled epidemic. And so nearly all cases, and we're talking about type 2 diabetes really here, I'll get into that in a minute, um, but it's fueled by sugar. So diabetes is a disease in which the body's ability to produce or respond to the hormone insulin is impaired. And so many people are dealing with this. And so the numbers are rising. We're in a disaster. We're in a crisis right now. We have more information than ever before about diabetes, about nutrition, exercise, prevention, but more and more people are getting the diagnosis. In 1958, there were 1.58 million people with diabetes. By 1980, 5.53 million. Um, and this number from 2014, 21 million people diagnosed with diabetes. And here's the thing. So a lot of people um, don't really want to correlate being obese or overweight with diabetes, but there is, there is a correlation, and you may have heard the term diabesity, and here's the reason why. So if you look at this, and this is from the CDC website, if you want to see the progression throughout all the years, it's kind of a cool thing to see. They have it in slideshow format, but you can see in 1994, that was the first year that every state was reporting their numbers on obesity, um, and you can see that the highest numbers were in the 15% to 19% category. And a lot of states were getting up there. Um, no states any longer were under 10%, and all the rest were 10 to 14%. Um, but check this out. So I'm fast forwarding, and you can see this is 2015. Now look at this. None of that blue is remaining. So the, the smallest category they have here is 20 to 25%, and that's just a few states. Um, but you can see they added all these new categories. And look, there's uh, four states on this as of 2015 that are over 35%. So these trends are just getting um, more and more aggressive, worse and worse as the years go by. And again, we have this information. We know what the issues are. 
um, but yet we choose to ignore it. And just to, to, bring that, um, to bring that home, you can see the trends. As obesity goes up, so does diabetes. It's just how it is. That's just the statistics. Now, why would that be? Because the same things that cause you to become overweight or gain weight, um, like poor diet, lack of exercise, all of those sorts of things, are the same exact things that cause you to become diabetic. So of course there's a correlation. It's not necessarily to say because you're obese, you have diabetes, but the same things that cause one cause the other. Um, and so here's the deal too. It, it's, it's funny, our outlook has even changed. So um, in the 1950s, a woman size 8 is today a 14 to 16. So what happened was in 1983, the uniform sizing system was dropped. This was the system that had been used for sizing um, garments and clothing for years and years and years and years. And that's where this vanity sizing came in. So a size 8 in the 50s is a 4 or less today. So, you know, I wear a size 4. That would have been an 8 in, um, in the 50s. And so we can see our outlook has completely changed. We don't want people to, to feel bad about um, gaining a little weight here and there. But there are health consequences to it. And so here's the deal. Again, we're talking about type 2 diabetes here. It used to be called adult onset diabetes. But guess what? That's not the case anymore. There's been a 1,000% increase in the type 2 diabetes over the last two dec decades for our children. And 40% of children are now overweight. So, of course, it would, it would make sense that the diabetes, um, type 2 diabetes for children is on the rise. And again, this is not, this is not some minor thing. Diabetes has a huge impact on your body and huge consequences in terms of your health and how much it's going to cost you to, to deal with these sorts of things, but damage to the heart, blood vessels, eyes, kidneys, nerves, heart disease and stroke risk goes up, lowers your immunity and your ability to heal. People with diabetes have a hard time with um, wound healing. It's the leading cause of blindness and kidney failure and damaged nerves, neuropathy. I'll tell you a story about that in a second. <clears throat> And then, you know, so signs of some of that stuff are numbness, numbness tingling, pain, um, weakness. But check this out. I mean, you guys can read through these statistics. It's costing us big time. Um, so if you're diagnosed at the age of 30, which a lot of people are now, that's going to cost you over $300,000 in medical expenses. <clears throat> and so, yes, you know, eating um, organic food may cost you a little bit more, but it's not going to cost you $305,000. I mean, some of these lifestyle changes that we're talking about are pennies on the dollar when, it, when it, you look at some of these statistics. And so just a quick story. We had a patient who um, had three systemic infections. He had heart disease. He has diabetes. He had severe neuropathy. <clears throat> he was scheduled for surgery to have his foot amputated. And his next foot was on the chopping block as well. And so we brought him in. And it was amazing. So he made these lifestyle changes. And in fact, he came back to us and said, you know, the doctors, I think, were trying to keep me diabetic based on the nutrition advice that they were giving me. So we gave him, you know, these lifestyle changes to make. He went all in. And he was able to come off all his medications, reverse his diagnosis, lose 60 pounds, um, and he gained his health back. It was crazy. And in fact, during all of this, he had to file bankruptcy. He lost everything. He, he was making six figures a year lost everything due to his health, was homeless when he finally um, found us. He was basically living out of his car. Um, but he was the happiest person in the world once he made these changes and he got his health back. And he would go around telling everybody that he knew. And so as, as he got all of these different diagnoses, his hope was taken away and we were able to give that back to him. Um, and you just have to know that there are changes you can make that will make a big difference. So who's responsible? Um, and again, with type 2 diabetes, it's nearly 100% preventable. And I love what Dr. Hyman says here. Um, it's not going to be solved in a doctor's office. It's going to be solved um, by us. Before we get into this, let's just talk really quickly about type 1, type 2, and even type 3 diabetes, which you may not have heard about. So type 1 diabetes, um, it's basically an autoimmune condition. Um, and there could be lots of factors that influence this. There's been research that shows low vitamin D, toxicity, or issues with gut flora um, can, can cause this. Um, and it's basically when you're not producing insulin. Um, but again, even with type 2 diabetes, we've seen people that make lifestyle changes. Um, type 1 diabetes responds really, really well. 
What we're focusing on most today will be type 2 diabetes, and that's where your body produces insulin, but it doesn't effectively use it. And that's 90% of the cases of diabetes are these type 2. And so things that can affect that, your body weight, physical inactivity, lifestyle, diet, toxicity. We'll talk about um, some nervous system issues a little bit later on. And then there's type 3 diabetes, which again, these lifestyle changes can impact this tremendously. So here's the deal. Um, type 3 diabetes, they have, it's fairly new um, because they found that the brain also produces insulin. And insulin in the brain promotes healthy brain cells. And so insulin resistance in the brain, just like in the rest of your body, they've shown um, can cause those tangles and placking of the neurons. And you guys know that is usually Alzheimer's. And so we have these skyrocketing rates of Alzheimer's as well. And type 3 diabetes um, is basically Alzheimer's. And so even as back as far as 1935, there were doctors that um, would call it psychogenic diabetes or people would have diabetic personalities because they identified even then that these blood sugar issues affected your brain. Absolutely. So when it comes to type 2, type 2 diabetes, it's not even just a blood sugar problem. It's an insulin signaling problem. It's hormone dysregulation. So insulin is really a sensor and it orchestrates um, whether a cell reproduces. And when a cell reproduces too much, what does that sound like? Cancer. Um, or dies or lives. And so insulin has a huge impact um, in our bodies and on our health. And so when it comes to the numbers, I don't want to get too bogged down in this, um, but a lot of people will look at you know, testing to see where they are if they're pre-diabetic. And to be honest with you, so many people are walking around who are pre-diabetic and have no idea. So when you look at fasting glucose, um, normal should be under 100. If you're pre-diabetic, it would be somewhere in the range of 100 to 125. And if you're diabetic, 125 plus. And then fasting insulin, this is really measuring what your blood glucose is over time. And to be honest with you, this number is even more important um, because most people test glucose, but you really need to test the insulin because it's possible to have uh, low or normal glucose and high insulin. And insulin will become dysregulated sometimes decades before it'll show up in a glucose reading. So fasting insulin, normal would be under five. Ideally, you really want it under three. And then leptin is another hormone. So leptin um, is the fat burning hormone, where insulin is a fat building hormone. So fasting leptin can also affect all of this. And so normal would be under 10 and ideal would be um, four to six. So the point here is that the more pre-diabetic you are, or in other words, the sooner you can catch this stuff, the better and the easier it is to reverse. And that all makes sense, right? Because um, once you become diabetic, really it's, it's, it's a life sentence in terms of the fact that you have a hard time getting insurance. You're pretty much always called a diabetic, even if you are able to reverse um, the diagnosis. So you're kind of flagged, if you will. And so the sooner you can catch this stuff, the better. Another thing that people look at is um, the A1C number. And the assumption there is that everyone's blood cells live about three months. Um, and it tests the amount of sugar, uh, sugar accumulated on those red blood cells over time. The problem is not everybody's blood cells live for three months. So people with normal blood glucose have longer lived um, blood cells. So therefore, um, people with normal blood, um, if they have these longer living cells, of course, more sugar, sugar is going to accumulate on those, right? And so the shorter lived um, cells, those are people with anemia or people with diabetes, um, it may be falsely low because those cells aren't living as long. And so A1C may not be the best way to measure these things. And so the best is really looking at fasting insulin. And then you can also look at your after meal glucose, which is really telling you how your body's using um, the insulin and how it's pulling that blood sugar out. And so after a meal, after you eat, um, normal should be under 140 Again, if you're pre-diabetic, that number will look 140 to about 199. And then if you're diabetic, that number will be over 200. That's right after a meal. Now, you should also test um, an hour or two after. And by three hours after a meal, you should be back to your baseline. So um, baseline, if you're fasting and you 
wake up first thing in the morning, ideally you want your glucose to be under 86. So again, there's lots of testing here and you can get kind of bogged down in this, but I just wanted to highlight that these numbers for um, glucose and A1C may not be the best indicators. There's more to the story. And so we have to really look at the big picture. So back to leptin and insulin. Um, these two hormones, if you can keep these two hormones in check throughout the span of your life, um, your quality of life, your longevity will all be um, vastly improved. And so these are some of the best indicators of long-term health. And to keep them in check, some people have called these two hormones the uh, fountain of youth. And they're so important. So if you have high leptin, in other words, leptin dysregulation, that's pro-aging, pro-inflammatory, it inhibits bone growth. Um, and, you know, it, like I said, if your leptin is in check, it helps you burn fat. It signals hunger. It helps you with those cravings, all of those things that are so important. <clears throat> all right, so you've been diagnosed. Um, and again, we don't want this to be a life sentence, and we don't want it to take your hope away. So the conventional treatment or the conventional um, um, idea is that you're going to manage the diabetes. There's really no talk about reversing diabetes, and that's really where it all is. It can be reversed. Your body can heal. Your body was designed to heal. You just have to give it what it needs, take out what it doesn't, remove things like toxicity, and your body can heal. That's such an important message because so many people get that diagnosis and they just, oh, they give up. They just give up and then, um, you know, they have, they have nowhere to go from there. So what is the go-to? The go-to is insulin therapy. And the thing with insulin therapy is that doses typically increase over time. They increase your risk of cancer increased risk of cardiovascular events. And if you look at this quote here, this is amazing. It says the overall results of this meta-analysis do not show a benefit of intensive glucose lowering treatment on all cause mortality or cardiovascular death. A 19% increase in all cause mortality and a 43% increase in cardiovascular mortality cannot be excluded. In other words, I mean, this is shocking information. The more aggressive the treatment, in fact, the higher the likelihood of, um, you know, all of these issues. And so we don't, we're just not looking at things the right way. And we found that, you know, with our patients, they'll start to make some of these lifestyle changes and notice really quickly they have to adjust their medicine. They have to uh, decrease their insulin, right? And so that's why it's so important to work with your doctor because you may not recognize what's going on, but your body is healing and your body is changing. It's absolutely amazing. And so let's look at some of the other things. Things like um, Avandia is a is a popular. Um, let me just go through these here. Is a popular um, diabetes treatment. So it was on the market in 1999, 2007. The New England Journal of Medicine showed that there's a 43% increased risk of heart attack, 64% higher risk of cardiovascular death. 80,000 people suffered strokes, heart failure, other complications. It took 10 years to even restrict its use right? Um, and it doesn't get to the cause. In fact, this was banned completely in the European Union. So, I mean, it doesn't get to the cause. It just really masks the symptoms. It tries to lower your blood glucose, but the problem isn't that. It's the high insulin or your body's inability to, to use the insulin properly. So, I just want you guys to imagine, um, what if, you know, what if what I'm saying is true and people started making these lifestyle um, changes, and what if diabetes suddenly went away altogether, or at least dropped in numbers significantly? What would happen? I mean, it's crazy. Look at all of these other drugs that are on the market now. And it's funny because you'll watch um, a commercial for some of these things, and then the very next commercial will be from, you know, a class action lawsuit attorneys that are saying, if you've been damaged by these drugs that you just saw the commercial for, contact us. And so, I mean, it's absolutely crazy, and it's big business. If you go to places like Rite Aid, CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, any of these places, they have whole sections um, for this, for diabetic supplies. There's things like glucose monitors and lancets and blood pressure cuffs, meds, supplements, food. You can get eye checkups, get your blood pressure checked, track your blood sugar, do foot exams, all of this stuff. And 
you see in the picture here that I have, you know, these diabetes um, products, and it is absolutely nuts. So if you look at that, I mean, there's GMO corn, there's dairy with um, added hormones and antibiotics and who knows what. There's chemicals, there's additives, there's sucralose, which is an artificial sweetener. Um, I'll have a slide on that here in a few minutes, but this is not food. This is not healthy. This is not going to help your body heal. And the fact that these things are being marketed this way, to me, it, honestly, it's a crime because people are being misled. And I would much rather see people eat whole foods, natural foods that are going to help their bodies heal than this garbage that ends up on the shelves. It's just crazy. And so it's a snowball effect too, because the ADA says that diabetes is a progressive disease that requires more and more medication over time. Well, that doesn't sound very fun. So where is the hope in that? There's just not, it's taken away. And so when it comes to nutrition, again, you have to think about, you know, how much sense does this really make? So the conventional nutrition recommendations for someone who is diabetic is 40 to 65 grams of carbohydrates at each meal. And really, there's, they allow more for snacks. Um, low fat, low fat, low fat, and no recommendations ever say reverse. And so I love this. There's a great um, TED Talk by this Dr. Sarah Hallberg where she says diabetes is a state of carbohydrate toxicity. And she goes through how, you know, why would you recommend eating the very things that cause the disease process in the first place? And in this case, it's carbohydrates because carbohydrates are sugar. So we have to really take a step back. And the low fat thing, I'm going to hit that in a minute. Your body needs fat to heal. It was designed to burn fat for energy. It was designed to use fat. The low fat thing is literally killing us. And in this case, um, with diabetes, it just doesn't work. And so there's all of these risk factors for diabetes, but most of it, honestly, guys, is just lifestyle. And we can change that. So that's where the hope comes in. When you, when you understand that you can make changes that will impact your own health, your own life, that's where the hope is. And that should be very, very encouraging. Now, you know, people talk about genetics all the time, and type 2 diabetes isn't necessarily genetic, but I'll tell you what is. It's those learned behaviors. So if mom and dad eat a certain way, they have a certain lifestyle, kids are most likely to do that too. So in a way, there is a genetic impact for sure, and it's because of that. <clears throat> So let's talk a little bit more um, about the carbohydrates. So your body does not have to have glucose from your diet. That is a fact. And our essential minimum daily requirement for carbohydrates is zero. There's no disease known to man that is caused by a lack of bread, pasta, rice, and those refined carbohydrates. There just isn't. And so all of these nutrition recommendations, and forget just about diabetes, just in general, have the bottom of our food pyramid, you know, six to eight servings of grains. Guess what? Your body doesn't need them. It absolutely doesn't need them. Nothing bad is going to happen to you if you don't eat those things. Um, there's something called gluconeogenesis, which is a metabolic process that happens in your liver and kidneys where it basically makes glucose, your body can make glucose from non-carb -car sources from things like protein and fats. And many of you may have heard of a, a ketogenic diet, and that's where this comes in. When you, when you restrict those carbohydrates and you restrict that sugar, your body then converts and uses ketones for energy. And that is perfectly fine, and that's why so many people have so many health um, benefits from doing something like that. And when we get into the, the Maximize Living Advanced Plan, you'll see that's, that's what we're doing, is we're eliminating those carbohydrates and we're increasing the fats. And so I know some of you are listening right now and you're, you're freaking out a little bit, but don't worry, we'll, we'll walk you through it. And many, many people have done this. So again, Sarah Halberg says, if you want to reverse type 2 diabetes, you have to ignore the guidelines. And that's true, and that's what our patient um, Patrick had done. He was, he was angry because he had been given those recommendations and they were opposite of what would help his body heal. So... Um, this is amazing, you guys. Like, there's been so many studies that show not only can this stuff um, be reversed, but it can happen very, very quickly. In this one study, it showed one to eight weeks. Um, in this other one, a dramatic diet change in diabetics reversed most features of diabetes within one week and all features by eight weeks. 
I mean, we're talking, that's huge, right? Um, what happened? Your beta cells, which are these insulin producing cells, start to wake up. Um, your fat deposits start going away. Your blood sugars start to normalize. Your sensitivity goes up. Like, it is just amazing. The human body is amazing in what it can do. And I just wanted to share with you this, um, this study that I found. This was amazing to me. So um, they looked at Marshall Islands, and you'll see this was a, a mission trip, and they, they tried to partner to, to look at what impact they could make on diabetes because it was becoming such a huge problem. So 60 years ago, the people from the Marshall Islands were physically active. They lived off the land. There was virtually no diabetes. But now, 80 to 90% of all the food that's eaten on the Marshall Islands um, is imported, and it has one of the highest rates of diabetes in the world. I mean, it is just, it's out of control. And so um, this mission, the, the Canvasback missions, went in there to try to see what they could do. So here were the results. First two weeks, their fasting blood sugars decreased, an average of 50 to 100 milligrams per deciliter. Um, triglycerides fell. Weight loss was one to three pounds a week. Disappearance of pain in legs, arms, and joints, less frequent trips to the bathroom, more energy, increased mental capacity, and guess what they did? Well, let me go back and say, so about 30% of people were diabetic in the Marshall Islands, 75% of women are overweight, 50% of men, um, and so when I said that food was imported, it was things like, so this is, this is the typical diet of um, the Marshall Islands, it's spam donuts, ramen, cola. So, I mean, we're talking about the worst of the worst from the standard American diet, right? And that's what they're eating, and no wonder their rates of diabetes um, have skyrocketed. But what they did is they went in, they gave them a nutrition plan, um, which when I looked at it is very, very similar to something like the Maximize Living and Advance plan. Um, they had daily education classes, physical activity, um, daily glucose monitoring. And the amazing thing with this is that this is in a um, country where there's little education, there was a huge language barrier, there was very little money, um, people had limited access to things like fitness centers and whatnot, and they were able to make um, a huge, huge impact on this. I mean, this is huge for those people, right? So the point is, if they can do it there, why can we not do that here? Why can we not set up centers just like this to educate patients, to get them moving, to change their diet? and have the same results. And then our country would look vastly different. And so just for an example here, this was a patient in, in our office, and this is a peer reviewed um, in a journal. She, uh, the wife came in as a patient and she started making all of these changes um, because she wanted to lose a little bit of weight. And she was the one that did all the shopping and cooking. So her husband, by default, basically started eating the advance plan because she was cooking the food. And he had been diabetic for decades. And literally, he got under chiropractic care, um, made those nutrition changes kind of by chance, and literally his diagnosis was lifted. It went away. And it's absolutely amazing. And this is not atypical. This happens all of the time. And so, again, we have to hit the sugar thing. Your body uses the insulin to move sugar into the cells for energy rather than leaving it in the bloodstream. Your body can only have about one teaspoon of sugar in its bloodstream at any time or else you go into a coma. So it has to take that stuff out. And so this constant bombardment of sugar causes the insulin receptors to burn out. In other words, your body can't hear it anymore and it is not working properly. So I know I've given you a lot of information and lots of bad news, if you will, um, but I hope it has your mind thinking about things a little bit differently. And now what I want to do is get into the, okay, You've told me all that stuff, now what do I do? And so this is where the five essentials come in. Um, and this is amazing. So we, we always start with people's mindset because that has to be right before anything else will be effective. Um, so, and that's where the lifestyle choices come in. So we have people getting adjusted, getting their spine and nervous system evaluated and functioning at 100% because that, it, nothing else matters and we'll get into something else. The food you eat doesn't matter if your body is not absorbing, assimilating it properly. And that comes from your nervous system and having everything functioning properly. You have to eat a healthy diet. In the case of diabetes, the advanced plan, and we'll get into that. 
exercise is a must. And I'm going to share with you some studies on that that will, it's going to blow your mind. And then things like toxicity, you want to avoid eliminate alcohol and tobacco and, and all the other toxins that we're exposed to because they're huge. And our exposures are way more than ever before. And it's, it's literally wreaking havoc. So nutrition. Here's the deal. You want to look at things that are natural, that your body knows what to do with. And so if you put everything through that filter, um, nutrition becomes pretty simple. So we're looking for whole foods as close to the source as possible. We're looking for um, higher fat, and we're going to talk about the good fats, moderate protein, low carbohydrate. We're eliminating all sugars, including most fruit. Um, now that's that's kind of a hard one for people, but we do. Um, you will be able to eat things like Granny Smith apples, um, grapefruit, berries, because here's the deal: if you're diabetic and you're eating bananas, bananas are pure sugar, and so you know even though they're fruit and they're natural, they're really high in sugar. And so for diabetics, we have to eliminate the sugar. We have to train the body to become a fat burner instead of a sugar burner. So eliminated, elimination of cravings and overeating, and again, this isn't a diet. This is a lifestyle change, and it's a nutrition plan, and I promise that it's easier than you think. And so, again, I showed you that, you know, the section of um, diabetes nutrition supplements and foods and things, and it, it just is crazy. So you have to become um, a label reader. So you want to look for things like minimal ingredients, natural ingredients. Um, if you see... Um, you want to buy foods that don't have label at all, i.e. kale, right? Um, something like that. It doesn't have a label on it. Check every label on every single thing you buy. I promise you, you will be surprised at what's in there. And we can go through, and I, um, you know, we do this all the time, where we go take people to the grocery store and do a shopping tour so that we can show you what to look for. And again, when you're looking at a label, you don't worry too much about the fat grams, the grams of carbs and calories, um, the types of these things are much more important. So we're looking for the ingredient label, right? You want to skip down to the ingredient label. label. The first thing that's listed is going to be the thing that's in there the most. The most of it is in there. So you want to look at those ingredients, and you want to make sure you're not buying any foods that have things like MSG, and they have lots of aliases. You can see some of them there. You want to avoid artificial sweeteners. You want to avoid hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated anything, um, refined flours, additives, colorings. And you don't want to look at the front of the box or whatever it is and be fooled by the slick marketing claims, right? Because, you know, when something says, for instance, low fat, I immediately know that it means high in sugar. And I guarantee you, if you go look and you flip the box over, it is going to be high in sugar. When you take the fat out, you have to replace it with something and they replace it with sugar. So... People can be very slick. Sometimes you'll see um, trans fat free and you'll flip it over and see partially hydrogenated something in there, which is a trans fat. The reason they can put that claim on the front is because if it has less than um, 500 grams per serving, then they can say it's trans fat free. So there's all of these loopholes and you just want to be really, really careful. And a lot of this sugar is hidden, you guys. Um, and we know it's in soft drinks, but it's also in things like lunch meats, pizza, all the sauces and condiments, soups are loaded with sugar, believe it or not. Crackers, fruit drinks, canned foods, yogurt, ketchup, mandies, all of these things where um, you may think you're trying to avoid sugar and that you don't eat a lot of sugar, but if you're using these things, you're getting a lot of sugar. And so, again, you have to become a good label reader. All right, so let's talk about the advanced plan and the hardest one first. Sugar and carbohydrates. So under this plan, you would eliminate grains, which would include things like wheat and corn and rice and pasta. Um, you're going to eliminate sugars and fruit, except for, like I said, berries, grapefruit, Granny Smith apples. Um, because here's the deal. Even healthy grains, even something like quinoa, turn to sugar in the body. They just do. Um, as it's broken down, your saliva hits it and it turns to uh, it turns to sugar. Something like two slices of wheat bread, instant sugar rush right to your bloodstream. And again, if you don't believe me about this stuff, go and go and do some research on it. So when it comes to diabetes, it just doesn't make sense to be eating the things that are causing your insulin to become dysregulated, that are causing your blood glucose to increase. It just doesn't make sense. Um, and then protein, we want to make sure that you're moderating your protein. 
because if you eat too much protein, then um, it turns to sugar. So we'll talk about the types of proteins because this is very, very, very important. And then when it comes to fats, we're replacing the bad fats with the good ones and we're even increasing our fat intake a little bit. And we'll talk about the nuts and bolts of that here. Okay, so healthy proteins. Um, when it comes to the meats that you eat, this is probably the number one nutritional change that I that I give people because of things like toxic bioaccumulation and just what we're doing to the animals and what we're feeding them and how we're raising them. And it's just, it's gotten really, really bad. So you want to change the meats that you're eating. And the good news about this is it's a lateral move. You like beef, you're just changing to a higher quality beef. You like chicken, we're switching to a higher quality chicken. So when it comes to um, beef, you want grass-fed um, beef and grass finished, you have to be very careful with the labeling, um, the tricky labeling here. Um, with chicken, you want free range, you want antibiotic and growth hormone free. Um, you want non-farm raised fish, in other words, you want wild caught fish. So those are the good quality proteins. And then I'm gonna talk about whey protein in a minute. Um, but some of the whey proteins out there are very, very dangerous. So I wanna walk you through that. But it's so important to be eating these high quality meats because you know they'll do research on um, beef that says red meat is bad for you it causes heart disease but what kind of beef are they looking at they're looking at the conventionally raised beef which looks completely different than um, you know beef from a cow that's been roaming pastures and eating grass and not in a feedlot so it's hugely important and then when it comes to good fats Things like olive oil, coconut oil, and all of the coconut products, avocados, nuts and seeds, um, omega-3 fatty acids, we'll talk about that in a minute. But that is, I mean, honestly, a bulk of my diet is there on that right-hand side. I eat a lot of fats, and it really does um, help my body burn fat. It, help, it helps in every way. It really helps my brain, too. If we have time, we'll talk about that. So... I know a lot of you may be sitting there thinking, well, what in the world would I eat? And so let me give you some examples. And if you want to, you can follow along. There's a four-week um, meal plan that I came up with um, to follow that has recipes, dinner recipes for um, every day during that four-week period. But here's just a general idea. So breakfast, and this is what I do, guys. This is, this is what I've settled into, and it's really, really not that difficult. So breakfast, you can honestly skip it all together. That's uh, a form of intermittent fasting. You could have grass-fed whey or plant protein smoothie. You could have eggs, maybe a little turkey bacon. Um, sometimes I'll have leftovers from the night before. It doesn't have to be pancakes and waffles for breakfast. You can have a salad for breakfast, let's say. Um, so that's breakfast. And then lunch, I pretty much always will have a salad with some sort of quality protein um, or leftovers. And so we want a good portion of your diet to come from raw foods. And so a salad is just a really great way to get those raw foods in. And you can do salads a million different ways. Um, you have to be careful with the salad dressing. Typically, I just use olive oil and balsamic vinegar or um, apple cider vinegar. So that's lunch. And then dinner, I'll make some sort of good quality protein um, and a couple servings of different vegetables. And so it could be a salad and a vegetable, two different vegetables. And I have tons of recipes for you guys um, that will make sure that you get full, stay full, you're satisfied, and you're not going to miss that stuff. Now, when you start on the advanced plan, it usually takes, and it's almost like clockwork, 10 to 14 days or so um, to really settle in where your body flips that switch from sugar burner to fat burner. And then you'll be amazed. The cravings go away. Energy levels go up. Your your body starts to you can you can feel the changes being made and you start to feel so much better. You'll sleep better, mood improves, brain fog lifts, all of that sort of stuff. So um, it's hugely important. And then there's a couple other things I just wanted to touch on, um, and that's artificial sweeteners. So that you know those basically came into play as hey you know we know diabetics shouldn't be eating sugar, which they're still recommending it, which doesn't make sense. But um, let's switch to artificial sweeteners. Um, but they've actually found that you can't trick the body. And so people that are drinking a lot of, um, let's say, diet drinks or artificial sweeteners in any form are actually gaining weight and having elevated fasting glucose levels and decreased insulin sensitivity um, and increased visceral fat deposition, which is where 
um, you know, around your midsection there, which is dangerous. And let's face it, guys, these things are unnatural. They're made in a laboratory. They're man-made chemicals. Um, okay, and the next thing is the elimination of alcohol and tobacco. Um, so again, these are environmental toxins. So smoking increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. And 50% of all diabetics die of cardiovascular disease. So that's important. And then alcohol has sugar in it. And so it'll wreak havoc on effective blood sugar control. So you really have to be careful with that. All right, now a couple things here real quick. Um, and I love these Maximize Living products because it's hard to find good quality products that you can trust. And so I wanted to highlight some of these and just how they relate to diabetes because this is, this is huge. Um, and these are quick ways to ensure proper nutrition. Um, we can look at how all of these resources have a positive impact on your blood sugar, which is what we're talking about today. I have a link on the bottom there. I did a, a quick link. You can go to tinyurl.com slash blood sugar battle um, and be able to order all these products if you'd like them. But, and some of these things are really just considered whole foods. They're not even really supplements. So in the case of Max Greens, this has it's a huge source of phytonutrients, vitamins, minerals, and these phytonutrients, when it comes to diabetes, now they have lots of other benefits too, but lowers blood glucose, um, protects insulin-producing cells, guards it against oxidative damage, helps decrease inflammation. And so I know I eat a lot of greens, and I still know I don't get enough. And so this is a quick and easy way to get them. And I'm not going to have things like, um, you know, chlorophyll and, and wheatgrass all the time, but they're packed into here. And it's just a really great way to pack nutrition into your day. Just mix it with water. It's chocolate flavored. So it masks a little bit of the, the green taste if you're worried about that. Um, but it's an, it's awesome. It's an awesome product. And then I mentioned the, uh, whey protein, which whey protein is, um, really bioavailable to your body. So it's a great quality source of protein, but you do have to be careful. So you want it to come from grass-fed cows. You want it to be unprocessed. Um, you don't want any artificial sweeteners in there or hydrolyzed anything. So a lot of the, the whey proteins that you'll find on the market are actually dangerous. They're not health foods at all. And so you have to get good quality source. And so for those of you that um, are vegetarian, we also have a plant protein Again, same things. It's going to pack that high-quality protein in there, and it's great for smoothies. So I'll do like the vanilla um, whey protein, handful of berries, which are allowable on the advanced plan, um, and some coconut milk, which again is a good quality fat with those medium-chain um, triglycerides, medium-chain fatty acids. That is a great um, breakfast. It'll keep you full till lunch, um, sets your blood sugar for the morning when you have that good quality protein first thing in the morning. We talked about the importance of good fats. And again, this isn't even considered a supplement. This is a whole food. Inside of those little gels, are um, those little capsules, are animal and plant fats that are going to give you the proper ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. And again, these good fats, although they have many, many, many benefits, um, we're talking about diabetes today, improve glucose tolerance, protection against the development of diabetes. So the best thing we can do is prevent it in the first place, right? And so, again, this is a great, um, great product. Then we've got Max GI, which has um, the enzymes, the probiotics, the essential oils. It's awesome for um, digestion, helps Im absorb those nutrients that you're eating, especially if you're going to be investing in eating better. Um, and it has magnesium and chromium, which are all um, high-quality nutrients. So the last one I wanted to mention um, and again, this is just a, a, a handful of our, our products that we carry because they're, they're so incredible when it comes to um, handling, treating, reversing diabetes. Um, this with the coffee bean extract supports healthy blood glucose levels and um, healthy weight. And so this is a great thing to combine with the nutrition changes that you're making and exercise, which I'm going to switch into switch gears here in a minute. Okay. So let's talk about exercise. And again, I just love this because not only is it effective, but it's so simple. And I've been doing, my husband developed Max T3. I've been married to him for over 20 years. Um, and it, it's brilliant, but it's what works for me. And we've seen so many people um, benefit from this. So if you're interested in getting the Max T3 digital version that you can have on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer, you can go to maxt3.com and you'll select my husband's name um, there on the, the little drop down. But 
here's why it's so effective when it comes to diabetes. You guys have to get your bodies moving. It's a genetic requirement that we move a certain amount of time each day. But this study showed, and this was over 3,000 people um, that had impaired glucose tolerance. Exercise proved to be far superior to the popular diabetes drug metformin by a whopping three to one. In other words, if you just get your body moving, and I'll, I'll talk about why this is the best way to get your body moving, this high intensity, short duration exercise, but it outperforms diabetes drugs by three to one. Why would doctors not be recommending it, right? It's crazy. So, and here's where the, the short duration high intensity comes in. So these short term sprint intervals, um, increased insulin sensitivity, increased aerobic enzyme capacities, mitochondrial biogenesis, I don't need to go through all of that, but um, what it's pointing out is that this, um, these sprint intervals or this high intensity training worked even better than just any type of normal exercise. So that's the short bursts of high intensity exercise. Here was another study that showed that improving cholesterol, blood sugar, and weight. Um, and this was more than, it was more effective than doing 30 minutes of sustained lower intensity exercise. So we want people to be getting their heart rates up fast, doing this high intensity, short duration. And most of these workouts, guys, are 12 minutes. You know, 12 to 16 minutes is the most you're going to be working out. Now, it's not an easy 12 to 16 minutes, um, but it's highly, highly effective. So why is it so effective? Well, it's less time and better results, so who would argue with that? But it's the, the hormonal and physiological response that happens when you're doing this type of exercise. Um, it's increased fat burning and lean muscle strength, which we want your body composition to be very lean, especially as we get older. Increased metabolism, increased energy, improved blood sugar control. And, I mean, it, it's crazy how effective this stuff is. And so we have patients that when they start doing this type of exercise and they're, and they're combining it with the chiropractic piece and the nutrition um, piece, it's just absolutely amazing what starts to happen. Um, and there's nothing like it. And you can do this at home. Like you don't even have to, we have a Max T3 Fitness Center here near our office, but you can do this at home. It's in a digital version, and we did that on our own for years. Um, so you can do this, and it's really, really simple and effective. So we talked about all this stuff already. Um, you can get DVDs if you want. I recommend the digital version, but um, you get a whole, you get 24 workouts and a whole bunch of bonus workouts that are really fun. Okay. So I want to talk about this um, just briefly, and I know this is kind of a confusing chart here, but basically at the top, your brain and nervous system um, control everything in your body, and people really need to understand that, and it's, it's often overlooked. I mean, most people haven't been under chiropractic care. They've never had their spine and nervous system evaluated, um, and it's so dangerous because you can see what happens here in this whole cycle. So you can see we start with essential number one, max mind where we're talking about meditation and breathing and stress and things like that. And, and all of those things, your brain, nervous system, and your, your max mind, set your neurological tone. And so you can see on the left-hand side, that, that red side, the sympathetic um, system, which is stress, and then you've got your parasympathetic, which is healing. And we want to stay over on this right-hand side, this healing side. And then you can see if you keep going down, things like sleep will affect that. And then your hormones become greatly affected. And to be honest with you, depending on your neurological tone, hormones can act one way or another. We want hormones to be acting the way we want them to, right? The way that they're designed to. And that we want them doing the right thing at the right time. When your neurological tone is off, that could be dysregulated. And then that also affects your stress resilience, how you respond to stress. Right, And so then if you keep taking it down, now we're talking about your nutrition. What kind of fuel are you putting into your body? Is it sugar, which is going to cause inflammation and disease and affect your gut and in, um, increase oxidative stress? Or are you fueling your body with good quality fats, which, um, which have growth and healing and help your gut and your brain, um, cellular repair, all of these antioxidants? And you keep following it down here and you've got your exercise component, and you can see basically this is the five essentials here. Um, but what's at the very top? It's your spine and your nervous system. It's so, so important, right? 
And so there's um, Dr. Don Klum here says there's no amount of protein you could take or diet restrictions you could implement that will make you lose weight if your hormones are out of sync. And this is all about your hormones. So first in command, brain and nervous system. Second in command is your endocrine system. But one is dependent on the other. So you have to make sure um, that it is functioning properly. So people need to get their nervous systems evaluated. So we are available at uh, West Cobb Chiropractic. We're in Powder Springs, Georgia. Um, but you can also find a doc. Look at all the doctors we have all across the nation um, that can help you, that are trained um, like we are in really getting to the root cause of people's problems and not just masking um, disease, masking symptoms. We don't want to do that. We want to get to the cause. And all of the things that I've talked to you about today with regards to diabetes is getting to the cause. It's allowing your body to heal and repair and to function as it was designed to function. So 30-day lifestyle transformation. I mentioned that we have available for you four weeks of meal plans, which will get you on track. It includes also um, a recommendation on how to incorporate max T3 during those four weeks. And I promise you, you will see massive transformation if you do this. But first, you have to determine your big why. Why would you even do this in the first place? And it has to be bigger than just losing weight. It has to be bigger than just reversing a diagnosis. It has to be about your future and who are you doing this for and why. Um, if your why is big enough, you can endure any how. And so again, that's what we're, help, we're here to help you do, but you have to determine your big why. You need to change the software you're running on and really change your mindset and know that you do have control over what happens with your body and with your health and your future. Make over your meals. Simplify it. I mean, it, it's really, when you break it down, it is, it is simple. Um, it may not be easy at first, but it is simple. So simplify everything. Make exercise a priority. You have to get it on your schedule. I recommend doing it first thing in the morning so that you don't have the opportunity to keep pushing it back, pushing it back, and then it's the end of the day and you haven't done it. Just get it done in the morning, especially if you're doing it at home. You can really make it um, quick in the morning. Avoid toxic exposures. Take care of your nervous system. Um, and even if you don't have diabetes, you need to be doing these things because the best um, thing is when you avoid the diagnosis in the first place. And I, I would love to know how many people were able to avoid a diagnosis by making lifestyle changes that I've talked about today. So here's just a quick sneak peek of what I was talking about with that 30 days, um, that 30 day program. So nutrition plan, your exercise plan, what supplements we would recommend, um, smoothie recipes, and then here's the 30 days of um, meal plan and if you look the ones that are in squares there if you click on those then it'll take you right to the recipe where you can um, view all the recipes um, for each day and then also you'll have a food and exercise journal where you can really track some of these things and make sure that you're drinking enough water you're getting enough vegetables you're eating your good fats um, that you're you're having daily affirmations and gratitude and checking your weight and monitoring what you're eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, your exercise, just to really keep you on track. And certainly, if you wanted to send these to us, we'd be happy to evaluate them. If you're here locally, um, we would do a tanita on you, which is measuring body composition, measure, measuring your fat percentage to lean muscle mass, and we'd want to monitor that over the 30 days. Um, but if you want to, you can contact us, and, and we can get you... Um, information on how you could do that in your local area. And that is it, guys. Now, I want you guys to connect with us for sure because we can um, help you and guide you through it. If you have questions, if you need personalized um, consultation, whatever, whatever the case may be. And to be honest with you, a lot of the stuff you could take and run with and um, see massive transformations. But if you need that extra help, or if you have specialized cases, you can certainly contact us. Thanks very much, guys. I hope this has been helpful to you and just, um, you know, continue to pour into yourself.